So on today's episode, I'm joined by Rihanna Parker. Rihanna Parker fights out of Blackpool under uh, the Enigma gym. Um, head coach is Paul Rice and uh, obviously main coach Lucio, um, who everybody knows. Um, Rihanna is a junior um, and she has had absolute wonderful success over the last few years. I mean, just some of her stuff. I mean, she's six time British Open gold, three times British Open absolute gold, three times Euro gold, two times Irish champion gold, two times Scottish Open, Pan Am silver and bronze, world's bronze. And she's won at every belt and all her belts, uh, all golds at BJJ 24-7. So um, that's just some of it. Um, I mean, if I was to, to mention all of our achievements in jiu-jitsu, we'd be here for quite a long time. Um, Rihanna as well, I mean, she's travelled all over the world, training, trained in Brazil, trained in California and so on. So uh, well-travelled um, and definitely one of the success stories coming out of the juniors. Um, She's been that good. She cleared out the, the junior division and she's now fighting at local comps, fighting in the adult division. Uh, I think you've been doing that now, Rihanna, for about two years. Uh, yeah, two years, yeah. Yeah, so you're about 14 Quite or so when, when she started fighting women double her age and even older. So, and again, had massive success doing that as well. So, uh, so yeah, welcome, Rihanna. How are you? Oh. I'm alright, thanks. I'm just a bit nervous, a bit shaky, but I'll be alright. <laughs> listen, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. So, but listen, thanks for obviously taking the time out, because I know you're oh, doing... Oh, thank you for having me on, yeah. Yeah, I know you're doing exams at the moment and things like that, so I'm preparing for exams, so how's everything going with that? Uh, it's alright, we've just finished our mock, so like, my head is focused as on getting better and also just revising as much as possible I can for my exams because I need to do really well to get into sixth form. Yeah, and yeah. It's just, it, it is, it's quite challenging to like, um, balance jiu-jitsu in school because which one is better, but I need to still keep training and training and training, getting everything better and getting ready for my next comp coming up in August. I need to get ready for that, mm -hmm. but also I can get my head down for GCSEs in May and June, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was one of the questions we had, obviously, the juggling, the jiu-jitsu, and obviously yeah. schoolwork as well. Um, I mean, obviously, jiu-jitsu, I mean, you, you're potentially, I mean, you're a potential world champion in my eyes, so um, I've kind of watched you. I think I've known you guys, uh, obviously, your family and so on for, I think, about four years now. I mean, I came down, um, you guys had the... Um, the event because I think you um, and a few others were going to the Pan Ams. Um, yeah. So I came down, you guys had a charity night. Um, I came down for that, spent the weekend down there. Um, obviously got some training with you guys as well. Got choked out by Matthew. Um, so we had a good weekend. We had a good weekend. So, um, so obviously for you, Rihanna, I mean, what, uh, how old were you when you started Jiu Jitsu? I started jiu-jitsu when I was five, but I started really getting into like the competitions at about age seven mm -hmm. and eight. Yeah. So when I started jiu-jitsu at five, it was kind. Of, it wasn't the jiu-jitsu it is now. It was more of a wrestling kind of thing. It was more of like a traditional kind of stuff where you're standing and then, and then when you get to the ground, it's just like a hold. Yeah. But then when we when in night, my dad saw like this more technical mm -hmm. and he was like I want my kids to do that so we found a place that did that so we got into that and when I was age 7 I started doing that more instead of doing the traditional side of it yeah. which I found was so much better and it, it's a lot lot harder but it's so much better in the outcome of it all yeah. so yeah. really good so what, what was the main reason, I mean, you got into jiu-jitsu? Because obviously get, getting in at five, uh, obviously quite young. So what was the what was the reason for that? Was it your dad? I know your dad's very, he's one of your biggest fans, uh, obviously. Yeah. Um, I mean, anytime you're at a comp, your dad's there as well. Um, so what was your main kind of reasons for getting into jiu-jitsu at that age? Well, my dad in 1993, when he was over in America, he he's like heard about the UFC ultimate fight when 
uh, Royce Gracie won against all these other kind of martial art people. And it was like, I want, when I have kids, I want my children to go into that. Yeah. So when we heard that a club, when I was born and uh, at like age five, we heard about a club doing that, what Royce Gracie did. It was mm-hmm. like, I want to put my kids into that. So that's how I got into it. Because we heard about like this ultimate fight. Yeah. My dad heard about the ultimate fight and that's what he wanted us to go into, some kind of martial arts. Yeah, yeah. And obviously over the years, I mean, as they mentioned some of the stuff that, that you that you've done uh, in regards to competition. Again, that's just a small portion. So you've been very, very successful. And then I know obviously that there's yourself, Matthew. Is Matthew still training? Matthew is, yeah, still training, yeah. yeah. Abby and Ben are still training. My stepbrother and sister, yeah, they're still going with it, yeah. Yeah, so I mentioned that at the conclusion of the last episode, saying that's a, that's a scary family. Um, so obviously the four kids do, 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 doing jujitsu. So I can't imagine your dad grounds you very often, otherwise no, you'll, you'll get choked. If there's anything, if dad shouts or anything, he knows not to go near because we're all gang up on him, you know. <laughs> and right. now with blue belt, I'll be wrist locking him, foot locking him. He's danger everywhere now. <laughs> well, obviously the blue belt as well. I mean, you got your blue belt, um, obviously from which you, yeah. So so that's you, obviously blue belt now. Um, I know you had the ACL problem last year. You blew your ACL, so you had an yeah. operation on that. How's uh, how's your recovery becoming along? Well, at the start of the recovery, I was not. I, I was motivated to do it, but I because of how it was, I was not focused at all. I couldn't. I was not training at all. I wasn't. I wasn't even allowed to go training. So my fitness level went down completely. I was not ready for anything. Yeah, and. Now I've started like going to the gym, building my legs up. My legs are like so muscly; it's ridiculous <laughs> how much I've put on with my uh, legs. Yeah, and I just feel so much better. And now I've just started getting back in more to training and rolling and sparring and everything. It's it, I feel so much better, like yeah. physically and mentally. Yeah. So obviously, next comps. Uh, when's your next comp? You mentioned what August. August, yeah, it's a local one. It's the Blackpool Open. We, we're thinking, like, because we're back from the recovery of the ACL surgery, go back in nice and easy with a a comp locally and then we'll progress higher, which I really want to get back into. Yeah, yeah. As I say, you obviously been all over the world. I mean, you went over to, and I remember we, um, when I was down, and obviously your, your dad and Claire and yourself were talking about Brazil. You guys went yeah. over to Brazil and trained over there. So, how was going over to Brazil and training? It was, it was really, really, it was different. It was honestly different because we went over to Brazil to train with the Vieira brothers, which mm-hmm. are so freaking good. Yeah. And we went over and it's a complete different atmosphere there because the people there are the fighting so hard and trying to get out of like difficult places. But it was because of the weather was so hot. Yeah. <laughs> I was out. Yeah. So, like, because I'm not used to the weather, it was just so crazy. It was it was a really good experience, like training with Rico Vieira. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. I noticed that in myself. I mean, I went over to um, 2015. I fought at the World Masters in Vegas. Um, yeah. I think at that point it was about 45 degrees. Um, yeah. And it was just. I mean, I come from Scotland. We don't get any sun in Scotland, as you know. So, um, so yeah, it's so a forty-five degree heat. Um, as I say, just on one day. Um, so obviously, I can imagine training in Brazil for a week or two weeks or whatever long you were there for. Um, obviously, the heat would have been horrible, absolutely horrible. Oh, it was. It was at one point. It was unbearable. We had sunburn on our back, and then we had to go train. It was like it was. It was <laughs> Killing us. Yeah. Oh, killing us. Oh, no, no. And then obviously you, um, again, California, you've been over there, Los Angeles. Um, yeah. And again, how was that experience? I mean, that was the Pan Ams, yeah? Yeah. Uh, well, first went over to LA and it was the Worlds and I went with, I didn't go with the Elite Squad because at that time I wasn't in the Elite Squad. Yeah. And then we went over twice. We went over again with the Elite Squad. Mm-hmm. And when we trained with them, because it, it, the weather is a lot hotter there as well, but also it was such a good feeling having a, a whole team around you, training with your whole team, but they're pushing you and you're pushing them. It, it was really, really good. And at the comp, 
I made ro- a rookie mistake, and that's what lost me the fight. It was a rookie mistake, but yeah. it will not happen again, put it that way. We do, um, I mean, yeah, we learn from it. I mean, that, that's something I've seen yeah. from you. I mean, throughout comps, yeah, if you, if you win a bronze or a silver, or, um, you always come back, um, and that's your goal. The next time I go there, I'm, I'm going to win the gold medal. Um, and I'd say the certainly tells in uh, some of the competitions you've won. So, um, but you as well, I mean, you for the juniors, I mean, the reason obviously you're fighting in the adult division is because you pretty much cleared out or you'd beat pretty much everybody they put in front of you in the juniors. Um, so obviously for a challenge, and I remember speaking to your dad about this, um, and he just said, obviously, you wanted a kind of bigger challenge. So... Um, how did the the move over to the um, the adult division come about? Because again, you were young. You're I mean, you're fourteen year old uh, when you fought your. I believe you fought your first adult division. So, how did that move come about? Well, it was more. It was more like we messaged because we only did the. We, I only have ever competed with adults in like the two four seven yeah. competition by Lawrence, and because I've trained with Lawrence before, and we know Lawrence and. My dad met, met, uh, mentioned it to him about the adult category going into white because obviously me being an orange or a green belt going into a blue belt wouldn't work because they I wouldn't be a I wouldn't be allowed to do up the wrist locks and the foot locks and they wouldn't be able to so I'll have to go in the white. Yeah. But it all went about by just asking because when I uh, enter it's the same people again and also it's not really pushing you if yeah. you're with the same people constantly unless they've really upped the game. Yeah. And, but you're also up in your game, so it's going to be like, it depends if it levels out, but some people weren't, there wasn't anyone in that cat, my category, because mm-hmm. I'm like a really low weight, but yeah. a high uh, um, age as well, yeah. so yeah. it was getting into that adult category was really, really good. Yeah. I'm glad I did it. Is, I mean, that's one thing, obviously, with Lawrence, I mean, Lawrence uh, it was quite good that he lets you do that, or uh, let you do that to start off with, because yeah. as we know, I mean, a lot of... Um, uh, event organisers won't even consider it at all, um, which is a bit unfair. I mean, if somebody's at a level where you can put them in an adult competition, then by all means, um, we'll let them enter. Um, and I said, I think I was at your first one. I mean, you, um, I think it was at your first competition as an adult. You you didn't win your division, but you won the absolute, if I'm right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't win the division with the girl. And I, I, I was absolutely distraught, and I was so upset with myself that I lost. Yeah. And then, and then I went into the absolute category, and she was the same person again. Yeah. And I instantly I self defeat myself, but I just I just had to do it. And what I got whacked into the table. She threw me into the table with the point <laughs> scorer. Yeah, yeah. So that was great. Loved that, but. Also, I won and I was very, very happy and I managed to get out of the move that she got me on last round in my division. Yeah. Managed to overcome that and learn from having that break with my coach, Mike, to help me get away from that now to win the fight in the absolute. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching your dad. I mean, any time I go to a competition, I always watch your dad. And your dad's, I think your dad's more nervous than you. (laughs) Because you see him at the side and he's uh, yeah. he's biting his nails and, oh my God, it's excellent to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, shaking your camera. And then when you want to watch the fights back after us, you can't see what you're doing. Because yeah. he shakes, his hand shakes, and he just shouts. <laughs> I realise when I'm looking back at them, yeah. he shouts some of things out. I'm like, Dad, that is not what you should say at this point. Please stop shouting. Please stop shouting and get your hooks in when I'm on Mal. It's not right. Yeah. Don't say that. <laughs> And it's the same with Claire. I mean, I know Claire, obviously, whenever she's at comps, I mean, you can hear Claire before you can see her. Because yeah, 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 she's very, she, she, her voice projects so much. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad, <laughs> but she just needs to say the right things, maybe. Yeah, yeah, but Claire's very vocal. I mean, uh, definitely yeah, a few yeah. times I've seen her at comps. I mean, everybody can hear Claire. And they're all looking over in Claire's direction and thinking, Who's that? And why is she <laughs> shouting all these stuff? Why, why, why is she shouting? But I'm glad she does shout and cheers me off because it's n- nice motivation. I like the motivation. Yeah, bro. Quite bro. <laughs> she doesn't um, care when she does it. It's great. But definitely. It's so fun. <laughs> um, 
Now, obviously, you, as I said, for, for, for you, for all the kind of juniors out there, I mean, you're definitely an inspiration. I mean, you're, you're one of the people they can look at and say, well, look, Rihanna did this, we can do it as well. Um, so, obviously, not just for juniors, but even females alike. I mean, um, you're definitely kind of one of the people that people look up to. Um, so, for you, I mean, who is it you look up to? Have you got a, a kind of favourite fighter that you that you like to, to watch? Because I know that you're friendly with a lot of uh, kind of women jiu-jitsu fighters. Um, so, is there anybody that is your inspiration? Yeah, I actually do have an inspiration. I think Samantha Cook is a great inspiration, honestly, because she she comes from not a jiu-jitsu background. Uh, she doesn't come from it. So for her to have got, like, world titles and all, and all the success she's had coming from not as a background has, like, Mackenzie Dern, who's done so well as well, but she's had the background of her father being a black belt. Yeah. Coming from that is just inspiration because I've not come from a very... I've not come from a background like that, so yeah. I really look up to that. Like, I want to be like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Sam Cook's great. I mean, my coach, Marcus Nardini, he he now trains under Marco Kana down at Fight Zone. Um, yeah. And obviously gets to train with Sam Cook and obviously all the other guys down there as well. So, um, yeah, very, very kind of friendly with Sam Cook and things like that. So, yeah. um, and I know that, um, obviously, Michelle Nicolini as well. Um, yeah, she's she's a, she's great. Yeah, love her. I, I remember training with her. She was amazing to train with. She's yeah. quite tall, but you know, very 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 flexible. Can't yeah. get past her guard. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> um, now, obviously, for you starting off, obviously you were at Scooby Jiu Jitsu. You moved to Enigma. Um, as I said, obviously training under Paul Rice and Lucci over there. Uh, yeah. How's Enigma? How are the guys there? Oh, I, I love it, Enigma. It, I, I really do love it. Everyone, it's, in the adults class especially, everyone's, everyone's so helpful with each other. Like, they don't, even with the, I'm training with a blue belt, the same belt as me, and I do something wrong, they'll correct me, and it's great. But we all just have a laugh as well. It's not all, like, intense and everything. We just, we're, like, really good friends, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So, a better environment, I think. Yeah. I mean, Enigma's good. I mean, I've, uh, um, a couple of times, in fact, I've been coming up against a couple of guys from Enigma. One got injured in the previous fight, so we didn't get the fight. And then the other one was Andy Wyatt, um, yeah. who trained, uh, I don't know, if it, does Andy still train at Enigma? He he trains at both, but he was he was originally at Scooby, and then he moved before we did. Yeah, yeah. He moved to Enigma, yeah. Yeah. Because obviously I was meant to come up against him as well at a competition and um, I'd lost the, the round and ended up going in for the bronze. So I remember the story, me and Andy were standing at the side of the mat and Andy will tell you this story and one of the, uh, there was a kid in the division, it must have been about 18, and he came over to me and Andy and he said, are you two in this division? And we were like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was like, well, uh, you're not going to win a medal today then. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was the first time I'd met Andy and Andy looked at me and I looked oh, at Andy and like what uh, Andy's an absolute beast honestly he's, yeah. he's massive oh my god yeah I like but Andy being, we, yeah we got on really well me and Andy and then obviously from that day on we kind of obviously become friends on Facebook we've met a few times at different comps had chats and things like that we've chatted on oh. Facebook Messenger so um, uh, definitely seems a nice he's a nice guy obviously from a nice gym so um, and you've got the full kind of reach as well of Lucio, because um, obviously you've got Enigma, and then you've got obviously Terence U over in Liverpool that you can yeah. go train with these guys. You've got Lucio's in, in kind of Manchester and so on, and then a few other gyms as well. So, do you manage to get around training at the other places? Uh, yeah, I've been to the one in Manchester, and I've been to his one in Preston. Yeah. That's the only two ones I've really been to. Yeah. And it's just great to just go down there, train with Lucio, and train with other people that are fighting under him. Yeah. Because then, when it comes to comps, you can all like meet up and help each other, like shout and help each other, coach each other. Definitely. I mean, Lucio as well. I mean, Lucio is definitely leading by example. I mean, he's he's all over the place competing and yeah. very very successful. So um, he's definitely one of the kind of the more kind of prominent black belts out there in the UK. That's that's going out there and doing it and winning. Um, 
So it's definitely a, a good person to be under. Um, certainly yeah, for you with, yeah, him, yeah, certainly for you with all your kind of achievements. So Lucio is definitely a good fit for you. So um, now in regards to your competition stuff, I mean, what is your kind of goal? So I know that you've done, obviously, you've you've won, obviously, the British, the Open, Euros and things like that. You've meddled at the Pan Ams in the world. So for you, as it stands at the moment, what is your kind of main goal? My, my main goal right now is to just focus on getting into the, getting back into the comps. But I would love to will, win the World Championships. That That would be a massive achievement if I win that and if I even get there again yeah. it would be honestly a massive achievement but for now like my short term goals will just be getting back into competing getting back up to my standard of competing after the surgery for definite yeah yeah definitely that, that, that's I mean yeah. you'll get there I mean you will get there I mean of anybody that I know um, you're definitely one of the kind of most dedicated people that I've seen in jiu-jitsu so um I mean, you've set yourself goals along the way and you've, you've absolutely smashed them as you've went through. So, listen, you'll be a world champion. I said to your dad, I said, when you're a black belt, I want the first seminar from you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so your dad said, that's fine. So your dad's already sold you out to me for the first seminar. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> um, they obviously mentioned your dad. I mean, your dad... Um, your dad's absolutely fantastic. I mean, he's, uh, yeah. for everything you guys are doing in jiu-jitsu, your dad is side by side with you every single yeah. step of the way. So he's at comps, obviously went over to Brazil with you, been to the yeah. Pan Arms over in California. Um, so uh, are we still going to see your dad going forward? Obviously, when you become an adult, is your dad still going to be there? Oh, 100%, yeah. yeah. Out of everyone, I want my dad to be there because he's yeah. definitely... The I wouldn't say he's the most experienced with comps, but I would say he's definitely the one that always like motivates me and gets me in the right frame of mind. He's always there to help if need be. Yeah. And he, but he's always been there from the start, and I always want him till the end. Yeah. With comps for definite. Yeah. He, he, for like the, the woman our sessions with Samantha Cook, we had to make the journey five hours there and back, and he was willing to do that for me to have that experience and. It, like, yeah. it's, why? Who's who would do that? Who would drive <laughs> that long? Yeah, for yeah. Like a two hour session. It's like it's the commitment he makes. Honestly, I, I owe him so much. Yeah, he's a. Has he been on the match yet? Because I know that any time I've spoke to him, obviously you've got obviously yourself, Matthew, Abby, um, and Ben, and obviously Claire's been on the mats as well. Uh, yeah, dad, my dad has actually been on the mats. He actually has been on the mats and. You know, he makes the excuses with him being old, but he, he can't, he can't. We have a role in everything. He's, he's, he's like, Rihanna, I'm going to floor you. I'm like, okay, Dad, sure. Right, let him have his moment. Yeah. Let him have his moment. And as soon as I went for the armbar, oh, Rihanna, my age, my knees, everything's going, my back's going. Yeah. Right, okay. Well, he did say that. He said maybe one day... Um, maybe one day so I always mention it to him every time I see him I'm like have you been on the match yet no not yet ah. not yet so not yet no not yet no yeah so maybe that be a response for every time you ask him <laughs> that be not yet no <laughs> so maybe we'll see a um, a masters champion if your dad steps on the match so uh, <laughs> maybe one day maybe one day <laughs> He, he likes to refer to himself a black belt of knowledge. He says he's got the knowledge because of all the experience of watching it. Yeah. But he hasn't. He says on the mats he would absolutely floor everyone. Yeah. Because of all his knowledge of watching it, but it's just a load of. Bull. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, see the amount of competitions your dad's been at. Uh, the yeah. amount, uh, The amount of training sessions that he's seen and he's been a part of, and. Um, I'm surprised he's not tried it in there because he would. I mean, his jujitsu knowledge must be really, really good. Um, the actual knowledge and uh, knowing exactly what the moves are and things like that. So uh, Yeah, he hope... does like help me with everything. Like yeah. when we go into a can't be helps me go, right, well Rihanna, this is what you need to do and this is the way he, he does like try and help me with things. He does. Mm -hmm. He tries and 
Do you know what? It actually works sometimes because I remember one comp um, where I was like, right, you've lost your first fight on this. Mm -hmm. Right, now that person will try and do the same to you to lose. So you need to do this to move. And I'm like, how did you know that? Yeah. Like before, you, before you were just shouting random things out. Now, what is this idea? Yeah. yeah. It's great. So he's picking a, he's picking a lot of things up on the sidelines. So, um, which obviously will benefit you going forward, certainly over the years. So, um, and then what about, uh, obviously we mentioned, obviously, Matthew, Ben and Abby. So Matthew, obviously still, still training. Matthew still competing as well. Yeah, he's still competing, but it's just the fact of the matter sometimes. I don't think he's exactly all in it as he used to be. Because yeah. he's, he's, he's just started high school and he's going through some exams in his year, so he wants to focus on that. But also, he's got his green and black belt, so it's really hard for him to be in a category with people in because there's not many people his age at 13 with yeah. a green and a black belt at his weight. Yeah, yeah. So again, hopefully, hopefully big things will come from Matthew again in the future as well. And then obviously okay. Ben, Ben as well. I mean, Ben's obviously still training, so is Ben still getting the time to compete and things like that as well? Yeah, ben, Ben's still, ben still going to need for competing as well. But I, again, he is going through this thing with his ankles at the minute. He, he's got really bad ankles. Mm -hmm. So he's got. He might be having surgery. Right, right. So it's just a matter of fact. It's, it's either yes, we're going through the surgery, or no, because of his age, because he's only young. Yeah. But he's really enthusiastic of getting back into competing, and he probably he will be doing it at the Blackpool. We all competing in the Blackpool because the he's Lawrence is doing kids, so yeah. we'll be all there. The family will be competing. We'll yeah. be back. So Abby as well. I know that Abby was it was it gymnastics or um, yeah, Abby gymnastic, used to do. Yeah. Um, so obviously I've seen the pictures. I saw the picture of um, I think it was Claire that posted it um, just uh, a while back. It was obviously you, uh, Abby, and Claire all on the mats together. So um, yeah. so how's uh, is Claire still training? Is she she not getting as much training? No, she's not getting much training. She's just really busy with work at the moment, so... Yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Um, no, she's not uh, getting into training anymore as she used to be, but she, him and Abby have started at the women's class once a week, so she has been doing once a week yeah. with all, of us, all the women at the club doing the women's session. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So she's there. Yeah. She's there, so, so she's just keeping it. So we just need to get your dad in, and then that'll be it. The whole family will be... Yeah, just my dad, and that's it. But <laughs> we'll keep hearing the excuse. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. No. That, yeah. We'll keep hearing that, but... That's nice. Okay. nice. I'll, then... I'll just have him a wall anywhere at home. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. And then, obviously, Enigma. You're at Enigma. Um, so obviously, any of the guys, let's say any new students, or uh, even anybody want to come down for a role... Um, how did he get in contact with you guys at Enigma? Uh, well, Paul is on Facebook and everything, so if he's advertises all over Facebook, and we've got advertisements up in uh, locally in area locally, and in taxis we've put leaflets and flyers out. So yeah. there's all a chance if you're like in Blackpool anywhere, and you'll see the advertisement stuff. It's all over Facebook and everything, and yeah, we. It says like the first session is free for yeah yeah. Plumbers. And then what about classes there? So what kind of classes do they offer? No, in regards to like different levels, you know, some some gyms do a beginners class, some do intermediate, and so on. So what about Enigma? What what kind of classes do they offer? Uh, so the classes are two two nights a week is a kids class, mm -hmm. which is an hour, and that's for little kids as well yeah. and that's from five to about i'll say 15 mm -hmm. and um and after them classes are adult classes on mondays tuesdays wednesdays thursday friday saturday but yeah. all adult classes got um on the saturday morning there's an adult class and then saturday afternoon there's a women's class which is really good and i'm glad like loads of women come down for that yeah yeah 
And then one thing I forgot to mention was the UK junior team. Um, so obviously the elite team. So you you still a part of that? I I am um I'm not anymore because I've I've not gone to the sessions due to my injury. I've not been able to go to them at all. Yeah. But I did I did I was in it when we went to the Pan Ams and then a year after that I was still doing it and then obviously my injury kind of like affected that so much. Yeah. That yeah. I could not go to the sessions because of how intense it was and but I really, really did enjoy it and I do miss it. Yeah. I really do miss it. Yeah. I mean they've got a very successful team i mean obviously you being a part of it you can kind of see some of the successes you've had with them and then um, yeah obviously the rest of the guys i mean obviously i met some of them i think it was like summer and jacob and and so on so it was a very very successful time for you guys so um obviously here's hoping there's more success coming from them in the future um now obviously this question i asked everybody you're a, you're a bit young i, I I asked them what would you be doing instead of jujitsu in regards to maybe a job and things like that. But you've not got a job yet. You've not left school yet. So, um, but if you weren't doing jujitsu, what would you be doing? Oh God, I don't know. I'll probably just. Um, I would definitely still be doing the revision and everything for my GCSEs. But I think I'll be more a part of like a netball kind of kind of a club because yeah. I do love my sports and I do love like doing sports within school I'd probably be doing that outside of school right. which is definitely something completely different to jiu-jitsu yeah yeah definitely okay. I'm sure but, if you'd done uh, that you would be a world champion at that as well so uh, <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely um, so a anything you want to tell the guys anything that maybe they don't know about you Rihanna um, so anything obviously we know that you're uh, obviously, you've got your jujitsu. You're doing obviously your GCSEs or school work and so on. Um, obviously, the family and so on all into jujitsu. You're at Enigma, so anything yeah. that you maybe people don't know about you, um, apart from everything we've mentioned. I've I've actually started uh, doing refereeing, so I've passed my level one course in my level refereeing. Uh huh. But for comps so when i get to level three i'll be able to like ref comps and everything and be great to do that as well yeah the ref. and then also in the kids class i teach as well mm. i also coach the kids so when we go down to a comp i'm there and because i can't obviously be in the kids class because of the blue belt mm -hmm. i'm there to help them and to train them better. and when they go to the comp even shout them and shout at them to do this move or that move in the comp to coach them and it's a completely different new side to jiu jitsu because I'm not used to like coaching. Yeah. So it's it's really different to like actually doing it. Are you a are you like Claire? Are you a vocal coach or are you like your dad a nervous coach? I'm a vocal. I'm a vocal. <laughs> All the way vocal. Right. I can shout at them kids. I can shout. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we'll look forward to at competitions obviously Rihanna Rihanna shouting from the sidelines uh, so we'll look forward to that <laughs> just the frustration because you're not doing it yourself and you just want get that get, yeah. get your guard close your guard because yeah. you want to do it and you just can't get on you can't run onto the mats and do it for them yeah. and you yeah. just shout as loud as possible oh brilliant brilliant uh, <laughs> Well, listen, Rihanna, thank you very much for obviously taking the time on. out from obviously your schoolwork and obviously from your training as well. So um, anybody that kind of sees Rihanna at competition, say hello to her. Um, Rihanna's very approachable. She, again, Rihanna's one of these people that um, if you want to talk about jiu-jitsu, she'll sit all day and talk about jiu-jitsu with you. Um, so definitely say hello whenever you see Rihanna. And if you get a chance to see any of her fights, um, they're definitely great to watch. I mean, Rihanna is a very, very technical fighter. Um, very technical. And she never gives up. Um, so I know that me and you had a role at, um, when I was down a few years ago. And uh, that was the thing. You Obviously, I was a lot bigger than you. And you that didn't yeah. bother you. You were still going for submissions. and uh, yeah. So it was fantastic to see. So, yeah, if everybody keep, a, keep an eye out for Rihanna. I'd say she's done a lot so far. Uh, and there's going to be a lot more to come from Rihanna, so we're looking forward to seeing it, Rihanna. Yeah, thank you very much. No thank problem. You. Listen, right. thanks again, all right, and uh, we'll Bye. see you soon, okay? Yeah, I'll see you soon. Take care then. Bye-bye.
Bye. So, guys, in conclusion, that was uh, Rihanna Parker. Um, so, as I said, very, very well decorated for, for the age she is. I mean, Rihanna's done more in such a short period of time um, than, I mean, most jiu-jitsu people do in their, their whole jiu-jitsu journey. Um, I mean, as I said, the, the, the list of achievements that Rihanna's got um, is unbelievable um, for, just, for such a young age. Um, there's definitely a lot more to come. I mean, Rihanna is going to be a future world champion, um, uh, without a doubt. Um, she's under a great team at Enigma, uh, obviously under the coaching of Paul Rice and obviously coaches of Lucio and things like that. And a fantastic team down in Blackpool, um, Enigma. So a lot of really, really good guys, a lot of good competitors as well. Um, I mean, whenever you see uh, Enigma at competitions, Usually these guys are winning gold medals and so on and so on. So uh, definitely a fantastic team. So if you're ever down in Blackpool, um, hit up Paul Rice. Um, obviously they've got the Facebook page. Uh, just type in Enigma uh, Jiu Jitsu and it'll bring up the Facebook page. Um, and yeah, I mean, go down if you want a roll. Uh, pop down and you can get a roll with these guys uh, whenever they've got classes on. So... Uh, for the next episode, we're going to have on um, Kuji Potter. Uh, Kuji Potter's from Open MMA. Um, runs a successful gym up there. These guys are MMA guys. Um, obviously, Jiu Jitsu under Marcos Nardini. Kuji's a purple belt under Marcos Nardini. Um, got his purple belt a couple of years ago. Um, and Kuji himself's a competitor as well. A very, very good competitor. I know I fought Kuji once, he beat me um, with a Kimura, so um, very, very good competitor as well, and these guys up here are, up in Oban are strong, big, big, strong guys, um, and very, very technical, so it'll be good to obviously hear more from Kuji when we speak to him, but listen, thanks again guys for listening, and um, we'll see you on the next one.